All right, let's get some quarterbacks here. Um, I mean, there's a ton of names, right? There's a ton of names, a ton of guys that you could plug and play. Yep. My favorite, and um, I said that I would start him over several guys last week, including Herbert, who I got a lot of crap for, uh, and Derek Carr. Um, I said I'd start him over. I, I don't even know. Basically, anybody that we talked about last week, I said I would start J- Jalen Hurts over because of his rushing floor. Um, and it wasn't even really there this week either. It was, I mean, he was, he was fine, but it's not, it's not like he had that hundred yard rushing floor again. Yeah. But it, it was freaking beautiful watching him play. I tell you what, um, lit up Arizona 24, 44. I mean, he only completed 55% of his passes with 340 yards, three scores, 11 for 63 and another score on the ground. It just goes to show you those rushing yards and a rushing touchdown just means so much more for quarterbacks. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa. Hold on, Jason. We have some breaking news. Uh, Doug Peterson said that he's actually going to start Jalen Hurts this week. I know that might come as a surprise. Wow, but I'm shocked. Yeah, he he actually said he's going to stick with his rookie quarterback after his performance this week. I can't believe it. Wow. I'm just flabbergasted. <laughs> um I know Carson Wentz basically said there's no way he wants to stick around to be a backup next year, but bad news, buddy. <laughs> it's not going to be great. His contract sucks, though, to keep Hold around on. as a backup. But hey, you Hold got hurts on. on a rookie deal. Just real quick. If you're Carson Wentz and you have like one hundred and forty million dollars guaranteed or however much, let's say one twenty million guaranteed. Wouldn't you just want to stay the backup and not get hit somewhere like you can just you know, save your body and you're guaranteed $120 million. Well, like, think about isn't it there just way. a small part of you that would want to do that? That's what Bradford did when they drafted Carson Wentz. Bradford was the seat, you know, the guy that was on the deal that was supposed to be the guy. And then they drafted Wentz and now Wentz is the guy. And then they drafted Hertz. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of full circle for him. He can uh, see the door though. I think Jalen Hurts is much better for that team given where it's yeah. at right now. So clearly, um, Jalen Hurts rostered in only a third of leagues at 33%. Criminally, criminally under rostered. Um, I think should be rostered in any league that's left, every league that's left. Um, regardless of size, I would absolutely smash plug and play against Dallas. Um, the injuries came to Dallas in droves in this last week, two weeks, really, I mean, all season since Dak went down, but especially on the defensive side of the ball this past week, I know Van Der Esch got hurt um, along with a couple other starters on defense. So I think Jalen Hurts is going to have a day against Dallas. Uh, it's going to hurt so good. And I wouldn't be surprised if he finishes in the top six in week 16. So I would plug and play him over a ton of people. Um, it'll be interesting if we, I mean, all the rest of the guys that we have written down, I would plug and play him over. So we can talk about some of them. Um, first up Marcus Mariota versus Miami. Did you see enough from Marcus Mariota to find him viable against Miami? Um, probably not, but again, he's got that rushing four two nine nine for 88, um, and played in limited action where they didn't have a game plan for him. Although it's a much rougher matchup against Miami. So yeah, it's nothing that I would be super excited for, but, um, they were, they were running him all over the place against one of like a bottom five defense. So I would say Miami is probably closer to the top five defense. And the the Chargers are bottom five defense. So I, I would not start him. Be aware of him. Um, if first is available, obviously taking him over Mariota. Um, I believe you called him Marcus Blowyota or whatever you Marcus said before. Marcus Bloda. Or uh, Mary Broda uh, if, you're, if you are so oh. inclined. If, um, if you're a fan. Yeah. All right. Now talk to me about Baker. Do you think Baker Mayfield rostered in only 27% of leagues is uh, a little bit more viable Baker and the Browns are at the Jets in week 16, who are giving up the most fantasy points to the quarterback position at 25 and a half over the last four weeks. So you got to be liking what Baker is cooking. Um, I mean, <laughs> see the rock. Um, I mean, he's, he's got he's got nine touchdowns over his last three games, 11 in the last four. Um, one rushing, uh, eight, eight passing touchdowns in the last three. 
Um, so, I mean, it's a great matchup. The, the thing that would scare me about him is just the fact that they could just ground and pound the Jets into submission um, b- between Hunt and between Chubb that, you know, I, I look at him similar to Ryan Tannehill. Obviously, Tannehill's way better than Mariota and we, we can, I, we've covered Tannehill. Uh, he's got more total touchdowns than, than um, freaking Mahomes does in the last like 24 games or something like that. It's just stupid. Then who? What? So, what? Who? The MVP guy? But that guy, that Mahomes. Yeah, it's true. It's it's really crazy. He's so um, good. He is. Um, so I, um, yeah, the, the, that's the only thing that concerns me about Baker is being, it's a great matchup, but do they just turn the ball to Hunt and Chubb and just destroy them? That's, that's my own, that's literally my only concern. <laughs> Yeah, I could see that. I could see them trying to do that. Um, it's just going to, I think, be a little bit more difficult. I mean, LA found that out the hard way this uh, this past week. The Jets Disaster. are top 10. The Jets are top 10 against the run. So, um, giving up the eighth fewest fantasy points to running back. So, I really wouldn't be expecting a whole lot from Hunt or Chubb uh, in that game. Maybe hmm. Hunt a little bit more than Chubb. But... Um, Honestly, what my sneaky play, I have a there. I mean, there's so many. There's a, there's a couple sneaky plays here, but I think my number two behind Hertz is probably honestly to a tag of Iloa going yep. up against Vegas in Vegas, rostered in a quarter of leagues. <clears throat> um, that ground game that he has and his rushing ability again is going to give him that floor. Um, we haven't really seen it in terms of yardage wise, but he does have three rushing scores in his last two games, only 145 passing yards against new England. And but the, threw, but the two rushing touchdowns helped but, a lot too. Absolutely. And, and, and just to, just to talk about Vegas real quick. I mean, they've, and, and I'll mention this for some other quarterbacks too, but they've given up 35 in the last two, 33 in their last three, 35 in their last four, 35 in their last five and 31 points per game over the last six. Like, I don't know how Miami doesn't get to 30 essentially with a terrible defense um, in, in Vegas. Um, And so just for that reason, they're going to score a ton of points. We're going to highlight some of their, um, their running backs here eventually, but it's like the, the fact that, you know, when they get to the goal line, if two is going to run the ball in and has the passing upside, I don't know if Kasicki or Parker's playing. It's only if we're recording this Monday night again. Um, but if they play, then yeah, two has a really high upside just based on matchup purely. Yep. And then uh, a couple of our more stretch guys. I don't know how you make it to the championship game uh, having to stream this deep unless you're in like a 16 team league or something. But Phil Rivers at Pittsburgh rostered in 18 and a half percent of leagues. Uh, man, that's a desperate heave ho if you're throwing out Phil Rivers. And then Mitch Trubisky at Jacksonville rostered in 20 and a half percent of leagues. Do you like either of those guys? Do you think either one of them is worthy? Of I mean, you'd have to be. I can't imagine how desperate you would have to be to start either Mitch or Phil, especially after what Trubisky did or really didn't do against Minnesota because they turned to the ground game last week, only completing 15 of 21 for a, a whopping 200 yards in uh, yeah, a scoring so, pick. Yeah. So, so a couple things on both guys, right? So Philip rivers is uh, he's got two plus touchdowns in each of the last five games, um, which is good. Um, and I'm actually a little surprised he's not rostered in more leagues. His issue is yardage, right? Is he's, he's not putting up those huge passing games because they're running the ball so much. Pittsburgh has a really good rushing defense. And so how effective will, will Taylor be and will Frank Reich opt to throw the ball more? And if that's the case, I actually do think Philip Rivers could be, um, playable because the way to beat Pittsburgh is through the air. Um, so, I mean, just abstractly, that makes a ton of sense, right? Where, yeah, I understand he's a very desperate play, but he's probably available if you're playing and if you're in a rough spot in a different quarterback, like let's say you're starting Jared Goff as an example, like I would obviously take Philip Rivers over him. And then Mr. Bisky, like this is the first time the Bears have scored over 30 points, um, in three straight games in like seven years, um, <laughs> which 
I mean, don't get me wrong. That's saying you're the, you're the shortest giant or something like that. But like, at least, you know, you are, um, like Mitch's look good. And so he's facing Jacksonville. Who's awful. It's in Jacksonville. You should have good weather. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if if they're going to run Montgomery 30 times for the first, like, I think that's the first time he's had more than 20 carries all year. And then they end up giving him 30. What a um, badass. Yeah, he's great, right? I, so I love good. that we talked him up two month, well, a month and a half ago about go out and get him for your playoff matchups. The Jacksonville's not going to be trying to win. They they have Trevor Lawrence in their sights now that the Jets won. Um, they're going to actively not try to win that game. Um, and so, yeah, I, th- I think Mitch Trubisky is playable. The issue with that is, is do they get up too too much and they're just going to run the ball uh, to run the clock? So the, those those are two guys that I, I actually do think are playable. Um, I would take Philip Rivers over Trubisky, though, um, just because of a higher floor. Uh, speaking of David Montgomery, last year there were six running backs that had 20 plus points in two of the three postseason fantasy football weeks, weeks 14 through 16. David Montgomery has done it already in two games. So he's done it back to back weeks. He is one of two running backs that can boast that feat of going 20 plus points in the first two weeks of the fantasy playoffs. Alex, who is the other one? The other one is no doubt about it. Derrick Henry. And we again, also we, said to go get. Yeah, we. I, I need to go back and listen two months ago to our trade targets because we knocked that that thing out of the park, man. I'm um, that I, I was super proud of how to p- plan your league for COVID this year. And um, that has been s- supplanted by here's the trade targets because we killed that. And I hope people listen to it. Um, and I already can't wait to do it next year because we we crushed that thing. We absolutely did. Um, now, I, I do want to say that while you mentioned Jared Goff, can we just nickname him Jagoff because he's pretty worthless? <laughs> I feel like I feel like there's really just no more appropriate nickname for Jared Goff than Jagoff, which is a stupid, irritating, or contemptible person. <laughs> <laughs> is that a yes? That, that I, was so good. There's no objections, so Jagoff <laughs> it is. Awesome. Thanks, Jared Goff. <clears throat> now moving on. Shall we get to running backs? Uh, uh it, don't don't start Jared Goff this week. Um, no, he's a Jagoff. <laughs> <laughs> as as much as again, we, we mentioned this last week, but as much as Seattle looks like a good matchup, um, and this is going to sound crazy, but on average, they've given up the least amount of points the last two weeks, the last three weeks, the last four weeks, the last five weeks. And they've given up the second least amount of points the last six weeks. You do not like, in my opinion, I don't know if you want to play any Rams players this week. Uh, Cam Akers is, is out. Do you, do you really trust Woods or Cooper cup or Tyler Higby or Reynolds or Everett or just, do you really want to play Daryl Henderson? You can't play. Malcolm Brown. Just rough, man. I, I don't know. I don't know what you do with that offense at all. Seattle is number nine against quarterbacks um, in terms of fewest fantasy points given up. They gave up the ninth fewest uh, fantasy points to quarterbacks over the last month at only 13.3. Uh, you mentioned the receivers. The receivers hasn't been any better. Uh, we mentioned it going into this week. Uh, Seattle was number one against receivers. So I'm not sure exactly how after this week, those stats will change. Um, but again, Seattle has been much better the second half of the season after Adams has come back for that defense. So Jared Goff and is, this, go ahead. And, and, th- and this will be the week that after losing to the Jets, the Rams come out and score like 48 points and yeah. they're just in a shootout and you're just going to throw your hands up and be like, well, what do you do? And that's why he's a jagoff. Um, 